Good morning, everyone. The intentions for Mass this morning for Afghanistan, for Sister Elizabeth on her birthday, for those recommended to our prayers, for the repose of the soul of Conrada Limbo, for the souls in purgatory, and for the conversion of sinners, the salvation of souls, and the reign of God's kingdom on earth. And we have the memorial of St. Augustine, Bishop and Doctor of the Church. In the midst of the church, he opened his mouth, and the Lord filled him with the spirit of wisdom and understanding, and clothed him in a robe of glory. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, we prepare ourselves by asking God's pardon and peace. Have mercy on us, O Lord. For we have sinned against you. Show us, O Lord, your mercy. And grant us your salvation. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. <clears throat> Renew in your church, we pray, O Lord, the spirit with which you endowed your bishop, Augustine, that, filled with the same spirit, we may thirst for you, the sole fount of true wisdom, and seek you, the author of heavenly love, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. <clears throat> first reading, a reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brethren, concerning love of the brethren, you have no need to have anyone write to you, for you yourselves have been taught by God to love one another. And indeed, you do love all the brethren throughout Macedonia. But we exhort you, brethren, to do so more and more, to aspire to live quietly, to mind your own affairs, and to work with your hands as we charge you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord comes to judge the peoples with fairness. The Lord comes to judge the peoples with fairness. O oh, sing a new song to the Lord, for he has worked wonders. His right hand and his holy arm have brought salvation. The Lord, the Lord. comes to judge the peoples with fairness. Let the sea and all within it thunder the world and those who dwell in it. Let the rivers clap their hands <clears throat> and the hills ring out their joy. At the presence of the Lord, for he comes, he comes to judge the earth. The Lord comes to judge the people with fairness. He will judge the world with justice and the peoples with fairness. The Lord comes to judge the people with fairness. Alleluia. Alleluia. A new commandment I give to you, says the Lord, that you love Alleluia. one another, even as I have loved you. Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus told his disciples this parable. 
It will be as when a man goes on a journey, called his servants, and entrusted to them his property. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, each according to his ability. Then he went away. He who had received the five talents went at once and traded with them, and he made five talents more. So also he who had the two talents made two talents more. But he who had received the one talent went and dug in the ground and hid his master's money. Now after a long time, the master of those servants came and settled accounts with them. And he who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five talents more, saying, Master, you delivered to me five talents. Here I have made five talents more. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. And he also who had the two talents came forward, saying, Master, you delivered to me two talents. Here I have made two talents more. And the master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. He also who had received the one talent came forward, saying, Master, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you did not sow, gathering where you did not winnow. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But his master said to him, You wicked and slothful servant, you knew that I reap where I have not sowed and gather where I have not winnowed. Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers. And at my coming I should have received what was my own with interest. So taking the talent from him, he gave it to him who had the ten talents. For to every one who has, more will be given and he will have abundance. But from him who has not, even what he has will be taken away. And cast the worthless servant into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, Augustine had more than five talents. He was overpowered with talents. He had a great talent for living. And he had very strong uh, passions about everything he turned his hand to. So as a youngster, he lived with his mistress for 15 years following the example somewhat of his father, Patrick. And they had a little child. And it's very interesting what Augustine and his consort called the child. They called the child Adeodatus, given by God. So he had a religious sense even in those years when he was naughty. <laughs> but he was also driven by great ambition. And he decided to become a professional rhetorician. Now, a rhetorician in the world in which Augustine lived, which was the world of the Roman Empire, was a, an art of public speaking which was considered 
the door to advancement, to power, to a position in society, and indeed to politics. So it was the stepping stone. Everybody who really wanted to get on in public life had to be schooled in rhetoric, in the ability to speak in public and think in public. But uh, Augustine, like many people who start out like this, was dissatisfied. He was dissatisfied when he got a job of teaching rhetoric. And his mind turned more and more to philosophical issues. And he struggled with the interface between religion, which was all around him in North Africa at that time. Um, Tagaste was in what is currently uh, Algeria. Uh, it was a, a hotbed of all kinds of religious movements. And he was attracted to one that was somewhat simple in one respect, in that it divided everything into good and evil. And while it acknowledged a good supreme power, it also acknowledged and believed in a supreme and evil power. They were called Manichees. And for many years, Augustine um, studied Manichaeism and was, in fact, promoting it. But he grew tired of that as well. And, uh, and he got tired, as we knew, we found out yesterday, he got tired of his mother's insistence that he practice the faith into which he was born, but which he had neglected and had replaced it, really, in his life by this Manichaean theories. And so he escaped from all that and went to Rome. But mind you, Monica followed him. But in Rome he met, um, August, uh, he met Ambrose, and Ambrose uh, was a layman who was also a rhetorician and a great speaker and had public office and was a catechumen, not yet baptized. Uh, and he had moved, well, Augustine was there, he moved to Milan. And still as a catechumen, the people chose him as their bishop. So he had to get himself baptized in a hurry and ordained and made a bishop. But it was Ambrose who had the greatest spiritual influence uh, in terms of his personal journey and his own thinking. His mother, of course, praying away in the background with her sighs and tears. And uh, it was while he was a student of Ambrose, talking to him and struggling with all his difficulties about Christianity. But they boiled down, in fact, in the end, when Ambrose had finished discussing with him, they boiled down to the way in which he was trapped in his hedonistic kind of life. And the story of his conversion is a very long one, but the actual crisis came when he heard these children singing a little song, and he only heard a couple of words of it. Tole lege, tole lege, take up and read. And he was inspired to open the scriptures at random. We don't encourage people to do this very much, but it had a huge impact on Augustine because he picked up and opened the New Testament at Romans 13, 13, in which Paul very bluntly tells the Romans, like, forget about orgies, drunken orgies, and promiscuity, and licentiousness. Don't let these things hold you back. And Augustine took this as a message, and that was a, the turning point, the tipping point, 
in his life. From then onwards, he devoted himself completely to the faith, to his relationship with Jesus, and to this freedom that he had received in moving away from that life of self-indulgence. And he received baptism, or no, he didn't, he was already baptized, but he was brought back into the church. And he set out then to go back to Africa to live a kind of monastic life, still not ordained or anything, but he was such a talented intellectual that he was involved almost at once in arguments about the current issues within Christianity. Anyway, we heard about how they stopped off in Austria and where his mother died, and he continued on eventually to back to North Africa, back to what is um, around Tripoli. And he was chosen again, but like Ambrose, by the people to become their assistant bishop and eventually became Bishop of Hippo, where he spent a long time, the rest of his life. But it was a life totally devoted to service, to service of the people in the first place. So he was a hugely important pastor, but also to the life of the mind. And at the same time as he was a busy bishop in a very, very active and creative community of Christians in North Africa, he was involved in huge arguments and discussions and publications about donatism, that theory that was a very complicated theory about the sacraments, and Pelagianism, which was a British invention, um, where we felt we could do all this ourselves, this struggle for perfection. He wrote incessantly all the time, and uh, out of his writings there came a body of knowledge that has shaped the church ever since and continues to do so. He is a monumental figure of importance in the church. But it wasn't all intellectual. Perhaps his best known work is his Confessions, which is a way of a kind of spiritual autobiography, which is irreplaceable in the history of Christian literature. But he also wrote, when the Roman Empire was collapsing, he wrote a huge set of books I think it was 15 volumes of a thing called The City of God. He wrote dozens of books on the Trinity. He was multi-talented and multi-tasked all his life. But in the Confessions, we see the real Augustine, a kind of psychology of the spirit. And it's there that he penned those immortal words about human longing for God, which all of us share in some degree. Our hearts are restless until they rest in you. And so we ask his intercession today for the church, who still needs pastors of his intensity and thinkers of his ability to guide us on our journey through life, on our restless journey, that we may find rest where Augustine found it, in God. Amen. Amen. Saint Augustine, pray for us.
<coughs> Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. So let us pray that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of our holy church. Celebrating the memorial of our salvation, we humbly beseech your mercy, O Lord, that this sacrament of your loving kindness may be for us the sign of unity and the bond of charity through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For, as on this festival of St. Augustine, you bid your church rejoice, so too you strengthen her by the example of his holy life, teach her by his words of preaching, and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, and ever and ever our Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, 
he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world. For by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, uh, together with Francis, our Pope, Stephen, our Bishop, Sylvester, his auxiliary, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with Saint Monica, Saint Augustine, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. As Jesus taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe, from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace 
and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. body of Christ. Amen. The 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 body of Christ. The body of Christ. Amen. 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 The body of Christ. Amen.
Thus says the Lord, You have but one teacher, the Christ, and you are all brothers and sisters. Let us pray. May partaking of Christ's table sanctify us, we pray, O Lord, that being made members of his body, we may become what we have received through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mass is ended. Go in peace.